after quite a long wait, a lot of betas, and many, many videos posted on this game, D-Day Enhanced is finally coming out tomorrow. I think it should be at the time of posting this. And we've just wrapped up on the content creator session, which some of you joined. If you see yourself in the B-roll footage of this video, point it out in the comments below. Feel free to say hi, because it was a very fun session. But anyway, we had that creator session and I can finally solidify my thoughts on D-Day in a full video, because before it was very much consumer advice, because it is a game you can install and play every time the beta comes around, but now it's actually coming out and there is a price tag on it, which is I think $15 for the base edition. I think that comes out at about £12 for the UK. So really not too much money, to be honest. And there are multiple other higher editions at $20 and $25, I think it is, for people who want to really show their support and get more cosmetics. But D-Day essentially is a World War II online massively multiplayer shooter. As a features rundown, it's got massive battlefield like matches with up to 64 players, vehicle combat, a progression system for unlocking class abilities and weapon attachments, 120 hertz refresh rate with no reprojection, also with the option in the settings to adjust that manually to whatever refresh rate you want, which I've actually never seen before and that's a really cool feature, four player classes, 19 different customizable weapons, 11 unique player characters, 56 weapon skins, four base maps, which are broken up into different areas in some certain modes with lower player counts. So there are variations of each map, but four base maps with three seasonal maps on the way and full integration with adaptive triggers and headset vibration and voice chat across the board. On paper, that sounds like a very, very solid game and a good time and D-Day is, but it's not without its caveats. And that's not down to the devs not being good at what they do or caring because they really are and they really do. It's it's just down to it being a very adventurous indie game in terms of what it's trying to accomplish with these massive multiplayer matches. But for the most part, I'd say it pulls it off. So let's dive a little bit deeper and see if I recommend this one or not. The game has quite a few different game modes. You'd expect the normal ones like Conquest from Battlefield, Team Deathmatch and Free For All, they're all in there. I spoke to the devs during the session and they're also looking into adding maybe capture the flag into the game if they can. And they were also throwing about the idea of a battle royale mode, but that one really isn't set in stone at all. I wouldn't expect that. That's not a reason to go and purchase this game, but they were definitely looking into capture the flag in the future, which would be awesome. But as the game modes stand, they all function as they would on the flat screen, say in a battlefield game. They work great here and I really enjoyed playing them both in the previous betas and in this one. In terms of the interactions in the world, one of the main ones is gunplay. And the gunplay here for an indie shooter is all right. I'd say it's pretty punchy with the sound effects and especially the kill sound effects feel quite satisfying when you do get a kill off. It's got a nice ping to it. It reminds me of the Battlefield 1 headshot ping. That sort of noise plays whenever you get a kill here and it makes it feel quite impactful. But the guns themselves, they're pretty standard indie shooter recoil, but there are a lot of guns to choose from, which I really appreciate and you can kit them out however you like in terms of skins and attachments like grips or scopes and drum mags for weapons which are applicable. I loved playing around with the PPSH and the MG42. Thumbs up across the board in terms of selection. Sometimes hands are a bit misaligned with guns in certain instances when you double hold them and the reloading in some cases is a tiny bit janky. They've really made leaps and bounds over what it used to be like though. I find the reloading so much easier now and overall everything operates fairly smoothly on this front and the weapon selection is very, very vast. There was a fairly big bug, which I'll get into in a bit with the weapons here, but I think from what I've seen in the Discord, they immediately fixed that after this play session. So it's pretty much not worth mentioning, but there are several bugs that I'll get into in a little bit. There are vehicles in this game as well, such as cars, which you've probably seen some B-roll of in the background, and also tanks, which are in, I think, a previous beta video, if you wanna go check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But there are tanks, vehicles, the whole lot and they're a little bit janky to drive but ultimately a lot of fun and the testing for those was also hilarious when they first got put in the game but vehicles are a load of fun but anyway next up let's talk about the visuals the visual presentation of this game isn't amazing resolution wise it's okay and visually it's all right, it's okay. As an indie shooter, it perfectly conveys the maps that it wants to, but not in a very polished style in terms of visuals. But they are making leaps and bounds in this area due to the lighting that they've implemented into one of the maps, which you're seeing on screen now. The actual Omaha Beach map looks really nice now because apparently one of the Firewall devs has come over and helped them with baking lighting into the level to make it look really nice. So this map in particular looks pretty good, but the rest of the game as a whole, especially with player models and the environment, looks all right. And if you can get past the way it looks, the actual gameplay underneath is pretty fun. 
It also does help that it runs at 120 hertz on reprojected. Big thumbs up, or you can also turn it down to 90. Whatever you prefer really helps with visual clarity. And that's kind of paramount in a multiplayer shooter. So I'm happy that we get those refresh rate options here in this game. One of the main things here also is team play, and I think that comes across very well in some of the team modes, especially in Conquest, where you have to capture each objective. The comm system works really well. I found no flaws with this throughout any of the betas. Speaking to teammates is perfectly fine, and in free for all, you get comms with everybody in the lobby. And when a match ends in a team based mode, everyone gets put into the same chat anyway. So, communication is pretty much perfect in each department where it has to be, and it can really make the Conquest matches feel pretty cinematic and really immersive when you're all having comms, telling each other where you're pushing, where enemies are. And there's also a ping function, which works really well at pinging enemies and revealing positions. And there's no other game really on PSVR 2 where you can see a player count this high. 64 players is kind of mind blowing. And this is the only game where you can experience it, I think, which is really, really cool. It's also worth mentioning that eye tracking is implemented here, both for menus and I think for rendering. I'll have to double check about the rendering one, but definitely for menus, you can use it to select or you can use a normal pointer in your controller, whichever is your preferred. Accessibility wise, they got lots of stuff covered here, which is awesome. Before we get on to my final thoughts about a couple bugs and whether they've been fixed or not and what their plans are to fix them, I want to talk about the nature of this game as an online game too, because as much as I really enjoy it, it relies on there being a player base. And the devs are actually doing a really good job of funneling all the players who are online into one lobby, so everything fills up really quickly. It won't have you spread across regions, I don't think. So whoever's on the game should be meeting each other on the battlefield, and there shouldn't really be population problems. But it is one of those games where the population, if it does fall, essentially you've got a game that is unplayable. Um, but I think the PSVR 1 version did have a fairly all right player count, and I'm hoping the PSVR 2 version keeps that trend up too, because this is genuinely at its most fun when you've got a full lobby of people just having a really good time in this World War II shooter. So I'm hoping the lobbies are full throughout its entire lifetime, but it's one of those risks where if you're buying a game like this, there could be dead servers, but I really hope there aren't. It also helps the people who own this game on PS4 also get a free upgrade to the PSVR 2 version, which is really appreciated from the devs. These guys are so transparent. I'll leave a link to their Discord in the description below because all this stuff gets talked about and reported on by the devs there, which fills me with confidence that they will keep updating this game, which is pretty much the best encouragement that you can get. But ultimately, yeah, it is a game that relies on that online component and having players. Otherwise, yeah, you're not going to have any lobbies to fill. And finally, let's talk a bit about bugs because I did encounter some in this session. Some of them, like the gun related ones with guns not shooting throughout the whole session in my hour and a bit so of playtime in this capture session. That's been fixed now. They found the issue. They've solved it. But there were some other ones like player bodies misaligning. You do have a full body in this game, which I really appreciate, but sometimes it would become misaligned, meaning my ammo pouch and even my menus would become misaligned. But I think they're aware of this and looking into it, so that should be solved as well. And then there was an issue in standing mode with having the floor kind of shake around you in VR, which was very disconcerting, but I think they're looking at fixing that ASAP as well before launch, so you shouldn't really have to worry about any of that. Overall though, there is definitely a level of jank to this because it is an indie shooter that is reaching for such heights in terms of multiplayer as an experience. But if you're willing to kind of not be a guinea pig for that, because if you've played the beta, you know what this game feels like. But if you're okay with that, D-Day is honestly a really fun time. It's had quite a big journey from its inception back on PSVR where I actually hated it. Granted, I was an idiot child, but back when D-Day, the original PS4 PSVR version came out, I really, really didn't like that game. But it's come a long way and I've come to really enjoying it. And maybe that's down to just having a really fun lobby full of people that I've had every time I've come onto the game. Maybe it's the developers being so open and filling me with confidence about the future of it because they've got seasons planned and content planned and bundles you can buy in the store and more maps coming. All that's planned out and it's coming to the game. So there's a lot of stuff that is guaranteed, which is good. But ultimately, it is a bit of a janky experience. But if you're okay with that, I'd say give it a go, it's very cheap and it'll show you support to the developers so they keep updating it and making it better and better. Anyway, I feel like I've rambled on long enough. Thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy the game launches tomorrow if you're interested. And if you did enjoy, feel free to like and subscribe and I hope to see you all in the next video.